Hi folks, welcome to a quick uh, episode here from NYCCNC. I wanted to show you a lathe improvement that I've been meaning to do for a while and finally got around to doing it and am, am very pleased with the results, or the initial results, and um, thus really wanted to recommend it to anyone who's trying to improve the fit and functionality of their, uh, in this case, mini lathe, but I would suppose this would apply to any lathe, particularly that of an import quality. Uh, this is the Mike, Mike Taglieri, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, his uh, lapping procedure to lap the dovetails. Uh, I did this on the compound in the cross slide. I believe here he also uh, mentions doing it on the uh, actual saddle, which I, or the carriage, which I would like to get to someday. Anyways, um, I will quickly show you what I did. Um, I did want to say the only real difference between what I did and what Mike recommended, Mike recommended here is that he used uh, Mother's aluminum polish. I started trying it with the polish and I, I don't have Mother's on hand and the other one I had didn't seem to be doing much after about a half an hour of the work and Mike mentioned that it took him an incredible amount of time so perhaps I just wasn't uh, spending enough time trying it but I decided to go easy um, but to try a much more abrasive compound which is this Loctite which I purchased from Enco. I think it was about $25. A little bit expensive, but probably enough to last you a lifetime. Um, it is silicon carbide, and it is a 500 grit. Um, as you can see here, it's kind of a slurry type mixture, and uh, you do want to be careful because it tends to get itself everywhere. It's not hard to get off, but um, certainly when you're working around anything like Waze, you uh, you know you you want to make sure you don't leave any hanging around because it will abrade uh, anything over time or or just be a pain. So unfortunately, I I usually like to show uh, the process as uh, as I'm doing it, but uh, I did this and I'm happy with the current setup and I at least right now don't want to take it all apart just to show you. But basically, I started uh, with the compound slide here, but it's removing the tool post, removing the screw. And then underneath it, there's the jib and the dovetail ways. And put some of the 500 grit lapping compound on there, and just slid it back and forth by hand. The directions are on the minilays.com page, which there'll be a link to uh, in the video and on my blog NYCCNC. Um, I ended up doing that probably uh, for about a half an hour, and I'd say every five or ten minutes, um, I'd take the compound off, wipe off all the lapping compound with the tissue. Um, I recommended using toilet paper, uh, sorry, which is what I use, which is great because you end up throwing so much of it away. And it's inexpensive. Um, and then put new on, try it again. And as you join that, you're constantly adjusting the three jib screws here tighter just so that you can feel a fit. It really is a feel process. I started with the compound because um, it's uh, easier to do because it's smaller and frankly because I think the replacement part here for this from Little Machine Shop is maybe $15 and the cross size is a bit more expensive. So I figured, hey, if I screwed up, uh, easier to repair or replace. It worked great. Um, I didn't actually have to worry too much about my compound. It was pretty good from the factory. I had a big problem with my cross slide, and that is that whenever, my, um, whenever I was basically making a cut, the area back here would lift off. It would lift up, and as you can imagine, when that lifts up, when the back lifts up, that's allowing the tool to point down, and that was causing a lot of chatter and really uh, interrupting the cut and just no good. Um, the solution was to tighten the jib screw when I needed to make a really good cut, but then I couldn't actually move the uh, cross slide in and out, which meant it was just it was just not the the right setup. The great thing about this modification is you don't have to do it all at once. Uh, I think I'm happy with the compound for now, but I want to, or excuse me, the cross slide for now, but I want to give it some more time. However, there's clearly a difference. I could not do this before, you know, being able to slowly and steadily with one hand run the cross slide all the way as far as you think you need it and then run it all the way back with, the, with the, you know, a good smooth stroke. And then the key thing for me is that when you get to that sort of back position, when I try and jiggle it, it's just rock solid, there's just no movement. Um, and a quick example, this is a little bit of a cheating example because I've recently been using a new uh, a new single point, or excuse me, a new uh, 
high-speed steel bit that I ground a rounded tip into, which is going to make a much, much nicer cut. But I just wanted to show you. Over here you can see how my lathe was cutting before. And like I said, this is with a sharp pointed bit. So it's not necessarily a completely fair comparison, but not bad, but there's definitely some rough texture to it. Ignore the threading experiment over here. Um, the first cut I made tonight was this. This is a piece of half inch 6061. I was turning it about 2200 RPMs. And uh, you know, I think the camera may even make this look a little bit worse than it really is, but it's basically a perfectly mirrored finish that has no smoothness or no t uh, roughness to it whatsoever. Um, so really, really happy and excited to see where this uh, where this takes me. Thanks.